The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to GoToWebinar, web events made easy. Welcome to the webinar. My name is Anupam Sahai. I am the co-founder and president of the company. Today's webinar is titled HIPAA Omnibus Demystified. How to meet HIPAA Omnibus compliance using AG5 Secure GRC. The topics that I will cover today I will start out by talking about the changes brought about by HIPAA Omnibus, summarize the changes that have been uh, brought about by the recent, uh, recent law. Then I will talk about how does HIPAA Omnibus impact covered entities, business associates and subcontractors. Subsequently, I'll talk about AG5, which is an automated tool that will, that will help you manage your end-to-end security and compliance needs and 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 the final set of slides will cover what are the things that you need to look out for to prepare for an OCR audit and if it if it does happen the AG5 tool will prepare you with all the deliverables that are required to to get ready and and respond to an OCR audit so I'll talk about those topics as well and at the end we'll do Q&A Meanwhile, as I'm going through the slides or if you have any questions, feel free to type in your questions in the question box and we will answer any Q&A at the end. Before I start the webinar, I just want to state that HIPAA and high tech is, is a very dynamic subject. Uh, some of the interpretations are subjective and it continues to evolve. While we have made every effort to ensure 
that the information presented is, is correct, uh, please consult your legal attorneys for, for the final word. So before I jump into the HIPAA omnibus summary of changes, let me just start out by talking about some common vocabulary terms so that we are all on the same page. HHS stands for Department of Health and Human Services. It's the principal agency responsible for protecting the health of all Americans. OCR is the enforcement agency arm of HHS. PHI and EPHI stand for Protected Health Information. Electronic version is EPHI. CE stand, stands for Covered Entity and BA stands for a Business Associate. So in terms of the scope of what we are going to be talking about for HIPAA Omnibus, HIPAA Omnibus talks about a lot of, a lot of um, upgrades to the transactional codes and, and uh, a lot of regulations related to that. Our focus is going to be on, on, on a subset of the privacy, security, the enforcement re related um, requirements and um, the electronic code related transaction information is not uh, the focus of the discussion today. So the fundamental question is what is PHI and, and everything and anything that, uh, P that HIPAA does is really around protecting PHI and all the security practices, all the regulation, all the, all the processes that are put in place is, is done with one single objective, which is to protect PHI in terms of how information is accessed, shared, and transmitted. So PHI essentially is related to one of the following. It could be related to individuals past, present, or future physical condition health condition, mental condition, or if, if it pertains to anything that can be tracked down to a particular person, individual, that's construed to be private and, and personal information. That is under the, under the definition of PHI and needs to be protected. The definition of covered entity is it could be a healthcare provider, it could be a health plan, or a health care clearing house. All of those different types of businesses are cons considered to be a covered entity. So if you're a doctor, clinic, psychologist, dentist, pharmacy, you're considered to be a covered entity or a health, health plan, health insurance company, or a health information exchange, they are considered to be a covered entity. And the definition of business associate, especially after the HIPAA omnibus rule, is that anybody who does business with a covered entity and is involved in transacting or handling PHI is, is a business associate. And um, they are now responsible for essentially implementing and enforcing HIPAA omnibus as much as a covered entity is or was before before HIPAA omnibus. So here are some examples of what kinds of businesses can be a business associate. You, you're talking about lawyers, accountants, MSPs, IT service providers, garbage collectors, electronic medical record providers, um, lawyers, accountants, so anybody and everybody who works with a covered entity and handles PHI is considered to be a business associate and, and they are now required by law to be HIPAA, HIPAA compliant. So let's try to summarize the changes that are brought about by HIPAA Omnibus. And one way to think about what HIPAA Omnibus does is that it enables high tech related changes that were brought about in 2009 as part of the American Recovery Act while the HIPAA regulation was enacted in 1996, high tech was enacted in 2009, and what HIPAA omnibus that, that was enacted in 2013, or rather implemented in 2013, is doing is it's bringing in all the changes or most of the changes from high tech into HIPAA. 
and that's part of hip omnibus now and uh, what that means is that there are new rules like the security rule privacy rule breach notification rule and the enforcement rule that now is part of uh, hip omnibus and some of these rules came from high tech but now part of hip omnibus and i'll talk about this in a bit more detail as you go along i mentioned that bas are now directly responsible and liable to ensure that they are compliant with uh, with HIPAA omnibus and uh, any subcontractors that work with either BAs or covered entities are within the purview of the law. Uh, HIPAA omnibus goes in great lengths to essentially ensure that the individual is in the center of uh, of ensuring and is part of the process to to allow and to to permit any sharing of information that might be done by the covered entity so individuals have complete access complete authority and complete um, right to their information and how it is used and they can restrict disclosure of any phi information so what this means is that uh, covered entities need to now ensure that individuals have uh, either consent or or disagree with any sharing of information so the notice of privacy practices uh, form essentially is, which is part of the process used by the covered entity requires modifications and there are new changes to the enforcement rule in terms of how what when a when a breach happens what kind of um, actions that covered entities and business associates need to take The other thing that has been brought about is that now there's a shared responsibility and shared liability to ensure that not that covered entities and business associates are becoming HIPAA compliant and and they share share uh, liability and share risk of uh, of exposure in case a breach happens and they will also work together to ensure any subcontractors or any vendors that they work with are following the law and and now as per hipaa hhs is, is required to initiate an investigation in case a breach is reported either either because of uh, an internal employee or a whistleblower or because a breach happened and the company discovers it and if a if a breach happens which involves more than 500 records 500 patient records there are new new regulations that requires covered entities and business associates to report the incident to hhs as part of the law the penalty structure has been increased there are multiple penalty structures which start at $50000 per incident to 1.5 million dollar Uh, per incident depending on the severity of the of the violation uh, especially if it in, in, involves willful neglect which means that you know that you need to be covered and and be following the law and you don't take steps to remediate or to to address it that's considered to be a willful neglect so if if you're found to be in under willful neglect then the the fines can be 1.5 million dollar per incident per violation with no upper limit so it can easily stack up and now if a breach happens as i said the first uh, line of action is to report it to hhs earlier there were some clauses about trying to figure out whether it's going to cause harm to the covered entity or to the phi or to the customer now the first uh, line of defense is to report it to hhs and uh, if necessary you can um, do some kind of a risk analysis to decide to withdraw it later but so the rules have changed uh, quite a lot and uh, they've been clarified to certain extent which were ambiguous in um, hipaa and and uh, high tech now hipaa omnibus lays it out very clearly and nicely and all of this implementation has started from september 23rd which just went by so if we take stock of uh, hipaa omnibus in terms of 
what are the key key set of processes or key set of requirements that as a result of all all the changes first thing is that covered entities BAs and subcontractors need to be aware that they can be audited and uh, especially I know that uh, HHS has announced that they would uh, uh, through OCR they would be conducting periodic audits audit starting 2014 and this is part of the requirement from the law perspective. I mentioned about the fines going up from earlier it was $100 per incident. Now it's uh, tiered and the fines can vary from $50,000 $50, up to $1.5 million per incident with no upper limit. And there are some new criminal liabilities that have been um, put together in case of willful neglect. If you know that you need to be following the law, and you're not taking steps towards uh, fixing the problem, uh, it can be construed as willful neglect. So there are some criminal liabilities um, clauses as well that allows the government to prosecute that. There are some whistleblower clauses that allows insiders or anybody who knows about uh, willful neglect related incidents to report, uh, report it to the government. And if it is found on investigation that those were indeed true, then the fines or the proceeds um, from the fines are shared with the whistleblower. So there's incentive for the whistleblowers. It could be a disgruntled employee. It could be an external business, etc., to ensure and to, to report to the government if they find that businesses are not following the law. And uh, state auditor generals can also bring about civil actions and can act in, in concert with the OCR to do the audits. I talked about the shared responsibility that BAs and subcontractors now share and earlier only the covered entities were responsible. Now there's a liability chain that is in place. So covered entities share the risk and the liability with business associates and the subcontractors to ensure that everybody in that in that chain is following the law. Everybody is taking steps to prevent uh, loss of PHI or breach of PHI and um, so they shared a sense of responsibility and liability. And the breach notification as I said now requires that if there's a breach you need to report it to HHS especially if it involves more than 500 records. If the number of uh, records breached is less than 500 then you need to roll that up and report it uh, by the end of the year. So it's a little bit more, um, it gives you more time but the idea is to report it to HHS ASAP as soon as possible. So let's dive into some of these uh, requirements that have come about and I'll spend a few more minutes on describing some of the privacy and security related uh, regulations that are that have come about as a result of HIPAA Omnibus. So from a privacy perspective, as I said, it, it is very individual centric. It's very customer centric, which means that individuals have complete visibility, access, and, and right to understand what information is being shared by whom. And, and there's complete um, freedom and, and uh, right for the individual to deny it. And, and to prohibit the sale of PHI without their authorization. And if any covered entity or business associate is violating that, they can be prosecuted. So the individual is at the center of this whole process of gaining PHI, act, gaining access to PHI, and then sharing it for any marketing or fundraising purposes. From a security rule perspective, Broadly, there are four different categories of requirements. Uh, so there are administrative procedures that uh, deal with policies, procedures, and employee training to ensure that everybody inside the organization is, uh, is trained and is up to speed on what needs to be done. Then there are physical safeguards, which involve security access to any sensitive information. Not everybody should access all the information that's lying around. If you have uh, physical files or patient information lying around, 
only certain people should be allowed access to that arena, for example, or you have to have fax machines that are transmitting information between um, labs and, and the doctor's office. They need to be protected or information needs to be uh, secured. And then there are a number of technical security services and technical security mechanisms that deal with authentication, authorization, encryption, and how information is, um, is accessed from a computer, how information is stored on a server, or how it is transmitted over the internet so that the information cannot be intercepted or breached on its way to the destination. So there are a number of rules or requirements that fall fall in the under the security rule which deal with how information especially PHI information is uh, stored accessed and transmitted over the wire so from a security perspective it's very clear that no matter how PHI is, is stored or available made available whether it's in physical form or whether it's an electronic form, whether it is sitting on a server, desktop, laptop, media, or it's being transmitted over the internet, it needs to be secure. And you cannot use PHI uh, information or share PHI information via email in, in clear text, for example, or, or in social media channels, it's, it's prohibited. And the idea is to protect, again, the privacy and security of PHI information. So in terms of who is required to implement uh, HIPAA high tech, it's pretty much uh, all the covered entities, and there are about 700,000 uh, covered entities, and there are a couple of million business associates that are required as per HIPAA Omnibus now to be compliant as well. And um, the, the government provides an incentive for adoption of electronic medical records and to ensure that people are implementing HIPAA Omnibus. And that comes in the form of, uh, of federal stimulus, where every Medicare or Medicaid physician can get up to forty to $65,000 to implement electronic medical record. And they need to show what is called meaningful use attestation, which essentially is required as per HIPAA Omnibus uh, rule uh, implementation. So if you are HIPAA Omnibus compliant, then you can generate a meaningful use report, which can be submitted to the government to get the grant. And uh, I'll talk about ADFI, where one of the tools deliverables is a meaningful use report as well, along with HIPAA Omnibus compliance uh, reporting that can be used to submit to the government to get the grant. So one of the questions that we get asked quite often is that how how often do breaches happen and uh, do we really need to care? <coughs> Excuse me. So the simple answer is this, that breaches are in fact very pervasive and it affects small, medium, large businesses, even governments. And, and here are some examples of some state level or, or um, tertiary hospitals that have been breached, Stanford, TRICARE, stolen laptops. And if you look at the statistics out here, some state, Utah state breach that happened, Alaska state breach that happened. And if you look at some of the statistics that are out, that are out there, it's kind of mind boggling. Uh, so for example, the first year after 2009, sorry, 2012, there were about 21.7 million records that were breached as a result of 600 breaches that were more than 500 records. So it's, it's a big tally. And uh, if you look at the HHS breach statistics that is maintained by HHS, uh, you can see here that in 2013, uh, there were roughly anywhere between 700 to 1,600 breaches per month that were reported to HHS. And roughly about 25% of those bre breaches required 
covered entities to take remedial action. So, and this, this is the number of cases that are pending with HHS. So you can see that these are very frequent activities. And once a breach happens, uh, the HHS or the OCR and, and the state auditor generals will, or, will, um, will be required to do an audit. And if you fail an audit, then you basically are liable for prosecution, uh, heavy fines. <coughs> you can be sued by the patients. And, uh, and, and so you're basically exposing yourself in a big way to all these um, liabilities uh, by not following the law. This is often called the HHS wall of shame. This is essentially where HHS puts up all the breach notifications that are reported to them. And if you go to the website and, and search for Google HHS wall of shame, you'll, you'll come across this website. So you'll find both small, medium, large, all kinds of businesses are, are named here that, um, that are um, showing up. And this wall gets updated pretty frequently, I would say, um, every week. Another thing to keep in mind is that uh, in terms of the breach statistics that are reported to HHS, roughly about 50% of the breaches are happening because business associates are not taking taking responsibility for handling um, the PHI information properly in a secure fashion. So it's not just important for cover entities to ensure that they are following the law, that they're taking um, steps to, to ensure privacy and security of PHI, but they need to work with the BAs now to ensure that they are following HIPAA omnibus uh, privacy and security requirements as well. So from a government perspective, from a HIPAA audit perspective, they are essentially looking to ensure that you are following the privacy rule, the security rule. Um, they want to make sure that you have uh, mechanisms in place to ensure that if a breach does happen, that you're reporting it to the government. And they're also looking for the fact that you're doing a security risk analysis. These are the cornerstones of the HIPAA audit program that's going to be starting in 2014. There was a pilot done in 2012 where about 150 plus businesses were randomly selected as part of the pilot program. And, and the 2014 program will basically gather the learnings from the 2012 program and, and uh, enhance it further. So now let's jump to the solutions uh, depart, part of the section where we are going to look at what can one do if you are a covered entity or a business associate, what can you do to essentially deal with all these changes, all these uh, little detail that requires you to follow. And, uh, you know, some people try to do it manually, but it's very labor intensive. It keeps on changing. Requirements keep on changing. And, uh, and there are lots of moving parts. So, so manual processes and the solutions that are out, out there are not sufficient and uh, inadequate. So that's why we build a tool called AGFI, and it's a cloud-based uh, compliance management and security management tool. It's completely software-based, completely in the cloud, no hardware, uh, no hardware required to implement it. And uh, it supports HIPAA high tech and, and, and other frameworks that uh, businesses would need. It has uh, what we call security posture management, which looks at all the assets, all the devices that are in the, in the local business infrastructure, discovers them, looks at weaknesses that they might have in terms of patches missing, in terms of um, default passwords and other vulnerabilities that might be there, and, uh, and then comes back with a risk value, risk exposure, that businesses might encounter if they don't fix the problems that are found vis-a-vis -vis the HIPAA omnibus requirements. So you have uh, an automated tool that, that does all of this through one click of a button. And uh, for people who are not really HIPAA omnibus experts, uh, there is an expert system, there is a, a knowledge base built into the tool that has built-in standards, policies, agreements that you can leverage and adopt and customize to your needs so that you have a complete soup to nuts solution that can help you become compliant with HIPAA Omnibus, 
uh, and, and then maintain your compliance levels or security posture level as things change because security and compliance is a journey. It's not a one-time activity. Uh, while you start out by figuring out what is missing and then you need to maintain it continuously. So the tool will help you automate the whole process, discover what the gaps are today and then maintain it as you go forward. And, it's, and it is subscription based. It's uh, very cost effective. So even small businesses, one or two doctor offices, all the way to large hospitals, large businesses can adopt it. There are multiple editions and multiple pricing levels to support uh, each segment. So what can you do with it? I said you can ma manage your security and compliance uh, uh, posture using the solution. You will get uh, get a, a, a console into the into the cloud-based solution that that will give you complete visibility. You have a real-time dashboard. You'll have reports that you can generate and submit to the government so that you are ready to go if somebody comes knocking or if you have to get meaningful use reports uh, related. Um, Payoffs, you can submit the report from the tool and you can get the federal grant from the, from the government. You can uh, get complete visibility into your risk posture and you'll have a risk score that you can um, work through. If, if the risk is high today, it'll tell you where the problems are and how to solve it. And there'll be complete guidance provided by the tool that you can use to, to manage your risk posture and, and maintain it. And then you can also use the tool to manage the security and compliance posture for any business associate or vendors that you work with. So unlike other tools that are out there, we, we not only manage the covered entities security and compliance posture, but uh, also for the BAs and vendors that work with them. So to give you a sense of what the workflow looks like in the tool, and I'll show you some screenshots as we go forward. The typical process that you would follow is that you would uh, start out by doing a baselining of your security and compliance posture first. In case you haven't implemented anything in HIPAA uh, omnibus wise, uh, don't despair. You can start out by doing a baseline and that involves typically doing a security scan, which will be a software scan that will be done by the tool. Uh, you'll do a self-assessment, which means you go through a set of questions that will be driven by a wizard-based approach. And uh, once you do that, you, you the tool will give you a gap report which tells you what are the missing elements and uh, also a risk uh, prioritization of the gap. So you will know which, which ones are more important than the others so that you can have a relative uh, pecking order of, of the gaps and how to fix the problems that are found. So once you have the gap report and the risk report, the next step is to put together a remediation plan to deal with the gaps that are found. And uh, this is somewhere where our partners who are typically offering managed services to our end customers come in and they would work with the end customers to put together a remediation plan. Uh, this might require putting together policies and contracts. It might involve putting together uh, training and awareness um, communi related communication to all employees. So all of this information uh, to put together the remediation plan, to put together a policy contracts and, and agreements are part of, um, part of the solution that's made available to you when you subscribe to it. And once, once you put these things in place, put together a remediation plan, fix the patches that are discovered and, and found, then you go back and do a risk evaluation again. And uh, if, if the risk score is, is within, um, uh, within um, manageable limits, it's not uh, high or critical, then you're good to go. You can, you can uh, essentially repeat this every three months or six months or every year. Or if you, if you find that the gaps are still pretty large and they have a high risk exposure, you repeat this process till, till you are completely compliant and secure. And again, this is a point in time, you've got to keep repeating this as things change, as new employees come in, as new laptops are add, added to your organization, or if you, if you bring in new mobile devices, they need to all be secured and, and ensured that they are HIPAA Omnibus compliant. So we call this the continuous uh, workflow continuous security and compliance workflow because as I said security and compliance is a journey it's a continuous effort and the tool will help you get uh, get access to your real-time security and compliance posture and you can take report outputs that uh, that you can submit
to the government. So you can generate um, a meaningful use report. You can generate a security risk report. You can generate a vulnerability report. And all these are deliverables from the tool that uh, you as an organization would need one way or the other to understand what is missing or what is in place and how to maintain it. And as I said, we have different editions of the solution depending on the business size. Uh, we also have a free community edition that I encourage you to, to download and try it out. You'll get a flavor of uh, what the solution does. Uh, you can download the solution from egestall.com and I'll show you the URL. But the solution essentially scales up from very small practices all the way to large hospitals. And um, there are different editions that meet the requirement uh, for all these different categories. So this is what the dashboard looks like. Once you've done the scan, once you've gone through an assessment, uh, this is a real-time dashboard that will show you your security posture, which happens to be critical in this screenshot. It's telling me my HIPAA compliance posture is very high, and all the devices that were discovered, uh, the number of vulnerabilities that were found, and the number of compliance controls that have, that have failed. So I have um, at my fingertips my uh, devices that are in my infrastructure, what kind of vulnerabilities exist, and the controls that are failing, and I can, with a click of a button, drill down into each of these views. And you can download a compliant, uh, sorry, a, a community edition of the tool from egestall.com and go to free uh, free service subscription, follow the link, and you can, you can get a diagnostic tool that will tell you in a matter of minutes what kind of assets were discovered automatically and what kind of vulnerabilities exist. So you can use that as a starting point to, to discover any vulnerabilities and, and what your current HIPAA con compliance level is with the click of a button. This is what the self-assessment questionnaire looks like, screen looks like. So you have, uh, we have the HIPAA legalese on the left-hand side, and, and, and this is sometimes very hard to understand. But what we've done is we made simple yes and no questions out of these requirements so that as an user, you, you just need to understand the question and answer it yes and no. You can upload evidence as part of your answering the question. And uh, to help you, guide you through the process, if you don't understand what needs to be done to answer the questions yes and no, we also have inbuilt policy documents that's available with the click of a button. And uh, this policy document will give you complete guidance on what, what are the requirements for this particular um, question uh, from a HIPAA omnibus perspective and how to go about uh, implementing it. So for example, we also have a sample BA agreement that's built into the tool. And uh, you can essentially use this as it is or customize it to your needs or replace what you might be using with, uh, with what is built into the tool. So you have complete flexibility in terms of how you want to go about uh, using the solution. But one way or the other, anything and everything related to HIPAA Omnibus is going to be in the tool. It's going to be automated by the tool. With, uh, with any policy and contracts as well. We have also built in a knowledge base, which gives you complete uh, guidance on what is the requirement, what is the question about. It gives you best practices in the industry that uh, people and companies need to follow to meet the requirement. And, and this is also derived from the standard bodies like NIST and ISO that, uh, that we've kind of culled together with, with, through our expert system. And it will also tell you an implementation brief of what needs to be done. Uh, this is one level drill down view of the vulnerabilities that were, uh, that were shown on the main dashboard. So this screen will tell you the top 10 vulnerabilities that were found. You can generate a report with the complete exhaustive list. It will tell you a trend line. It will show you a trend line of, uh, of how things are changing with time. And for each, each uh, device, each asset, it will tell you a list of vulnerabilities, the services that were failing and, and that are vulnerable, and how to fix the problem. So you've got complete visibility, and this is how the remediation part will look like, where it will tell you to go to this URL to download a patch to fix this particular remote code execution vulnerability. So we tell you the problems, we tell you the solution, so that you have a complete guided map, guide map of how to go about fixing the problems that are found 
and identified by the solution. From a risk management perspective, uh, I would uh, just say that uh, the information needed to compute the risk score for, for the company is all um, automated and we leverage the information that is derived from the compliance and the security posture management modules. Uh, once the assets are discovered, all you need to do is to identify the asset type for that particular asset and, and the system and the expert system will essentially take over from there and will automatically identify the threats and, and vulnerabilities that were related and found for that particular asset type. And uh, we have a pre-configured database that is pre-populated with all this information. So you can then uh, go about uh, um, your uh, completing the task by uh, answering or you can import, an, import the assessment uh, questionnaire from a prior HIPAA assessment that you might have done. And uh, the questionnaire essentially deals with which uh, controls are in place, which are not in place. Once you do that, you come up with a risk score that uh, essentially gives you your risk exposure quotient for the company. And as you make changes, as you implement uh, new controls, as you improve your vulnerabilities or fix patches, the risk score would vary depending on how things are changing. So you can compute your risk anytime and, and we support continuous risk management as, as we do for security and compliance management. Here's a sample report on compliance. This is a ROC report. We call it the report on compliance that is available from the tool. Again, this is a single uh, button click uh, operation. Once you've gone through the assessment process, <clears throat> it will tell you what are the gaps that were found? It will tell you how many controls were compliant. If you work with any business associates, it will tell you what their compliance status is, whether they're compliant or not. And, uh, and for your internal controls, uh, how many were found to be compliant, etc. So you have a complete detailed view of your compliance posture, your business associates and subcontractors compliance posture. And uh, you, know, you can also, for example, if you're a covered entity, because of HIPAA Omnibus, now you need to make sure that BAs are following the law and you can exercise some leverage here to ensure that they follow HIPAA Omnibus and, and you, can, uh, you can work with them to ensure that they use an uh, automated tool to protect and implement HIPAA Omnibus. So here's a sample email that you can send uh, as a CE to, to a BA. So last, uh, last slide, uh, last two slides. So from an OCR audit preparation perspective, clearly all the things that I talked about are important. You need to understand what is required of HIPAA high tech. There needs to be a plan in place with ownership. You need to, need to train and educate your employees and, and do gap assessment uh, and vulnerability analysis and uh, do that regularly. And in case gaps are found, then the safeguards and controls need to be implemented along with putting together a breach notification plan. So at the end, you also need to have a proof of compliance to show that you have made progress towards meeting HIPAA omnibus requirements, and, and that's um, going to help you avoid the willful neglect clause. So the good news is that the tool will automate all of this for you, and you've got all these covered if you, if you use a tool like AG5. And we are pretty much unique in the industry in that we automate everything in terms of whatever is needed for HEPA Omnibus. It's available in the tool through an expert system-based approach. So even if you don't understand where to start, the tool will help you, guide you, and get you going. If you are audited by an OCR, again, um, they will typically reach out to you with certain questions. Uh, they would see, like to see your report on compliance and what policies and procedures you have in place what is the breach notification plan, who does what in the organization. And again, all of this would be a breeze to go through if you have a tool like Edify to, to help you through the process of becoming HIPAA Omnibus compliant. So I know I went through a lot of information here, but um, let me just close by saying that, um, you know, Edify Secure GRC is a complete uh, soup to nut solution for managing all your HIPAA Omnibus needs. Uh, if you need to get the federal grant dollars, uh, which is the incentive provided by the government, you can use the tool for that. You can implement a BA and a vendor management program. And uh, if your service provider supports AG5, 
that's good. You can work with them. Otherwise, we can work with you to get your um, services uh, provider be enabled with AG5. And if you want a copy of the slides, please uh, feel free to reach out to me after the after the webinar. With this, I will open up my uh, open up uh, for any Q and A. By the way, my contact information is right here. Feel free to drop me an email uh, if you want a copy of the slides or if you have any feedback on the webinar. I would love to hear back from you. So we have a number of questions here. Let's start. So the first question is, which business unit <coughs> excuse me, or support function should own HIPAA compliance? So it really comes down to the, uh, to the question about who owns HIPAA compliance <coughs> in the organization. And, and typically, there's a HIPAA compliance officer, uh, which is in the CIO's organization. Sometimes it's owned by the chief security officer. Sometimes it's owned by the chief compliance officer. So depending on the designate um, uh, in terms of ownership responsibility-wise, uh, whosoever has the compliance responsibility should, should own HIPAA compliance um, responsibility. The next question is, what roles and responsibility does the legal department have regarding HIPAA omnibus compliance? That's a great question. So the responsibility of the legal department, as I see it, is to work in conjunction with the, with the compliance officer or, or the designate to clarify any questions or clarifications with respect to any ambiguities in the law. If you're using a tool like AG5, that, that has been taken care of by the tool from the expert system perspective. But otherwise, the legal department can, can help disambiguate that information further because there's a lot of confusion about how to interpret the law, the multiple interpretations available, and the legal department um, can, can help in that. The next question is, how can I start an evaluation? Uh, you, can, you can drop me a note, uh, and uh, I can get you started. If you want to try out the community edition of the tool, you can, you can download it from egestall.com and go to free subscription. And, and, and follow the link there to, to basically try out a community edition. If you want to try out um, you know, a full-blown paid edition, uh, you want to do a trial there, I can help you there. Drop me a note, and I'll get you started. OK, the last question is, how do you price the solution? So the pricing of the solution is very, very cost effective. As I said, at the entry level, it's uh, meant to be affordable for even small doctor's office. So the 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 standard edition, which is the entry-level product, uh, starts in, in, in uh, roughly between $1,000 and $1,500 per year, depending on what services you are subscribing to. And uh, the ultimate edition goes all the way to $7,500 per year to $10,000 per year. And we have a professional edition, which is meant for <clears throat> medium-sized businesses. That starts at about $2,500 to $4,000 a year. Again, if you are interested in um, evaluating or seeing a more detailed demo, feel free to reach out to me, and uh, we, can, we can set that up for you. With that, uh, we come to the end of the webinar. I would like to thank you all for coming. Appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to attend the webinar. And again, um, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, reach out to me. We'll appreciate any any feedback that you might have. Have a great day and, and um, look forward to seeing you in the next webinar. Thank you. Take care. Bye.